right into the match. We've got two players already getting ready to play. Or is this warm up? Who can know? But this is me on the mic, let it rain. And of course, I'm joined by a new face, a wonderful face, Chillin' Walk. How you doing, sir? You know what, Rain? I'm doing pretty hot. This has been a while since I comped Smash. It's also been a while since I saw me brawler getting in, because right now, Micro is putting in some good damage coming in, already at 66 so far, and already racking up with a good amount of damage state. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the characters, it's just like, hey, I could just shop it all day, all night from the center of the stage, because hey, free projectile versus a sortie, free money, man. Definitely interesting that he actually opted to go for the grapple instead of the instead of the other side B, where it works really well during tech situations. But right now, we take a look at Frost. It is a better matchup when we take a look at the Sorties versus the Me Brawlers. Definitely liking that up B option though from Micro, as it is a pretty solid kill option. Oh. The kill options an up smash for the first stock. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I like uh, every time you see me on here. It's great that's online because you can see how they customize their characters. You don't get to see this offline very much, but. Everyone yeah. has a fun little meme that they like to decorate themselves with. I could not tell you what Micro's me is supposed to represent. Maybe it's them. Maybe it's a favorite fictional character. Who knows? But they're letting it fly, and I like that. And speaking of me, Brawlers, man, we, have, we do have the Tifa costumes coming in for the new Battle Pass. So I'm excited to see some people go with Tifa as Frost taking the sec the first stock from Micro with the solid up Yada shield. So looking good on his end. Yeah, free up a Yetta shield. Hey, if you poke my shield, you're going to eat, you know, 27% for it. So it works just fine. But then, oh my goodness, Ooh. quick, fresh combos. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far from Frost. I mean, this is what, a, a loser's, uh, a loser's semi-final match in the, in the current bracket. So it's interesting to see these two show their stuff really strong. And oh my goodness, speaking of strong, that punch is a yeah. deadly for Micro. Yeah, definitely, res definitely enjoying Micro calling out Frost, especially on the way he wants to land with those uppercuts here. Looking really good as he managed to take one here. Let's get back on the ledge, and I'm a little bit worried on how he wants to answer back. However, when we take a look at Frost's playstyle, man, he's getting caught out. Usually, as a sword, you want to space everything out, but he's getting a little bit too antsy and rushing down the Mii Brawler. I mean, take a look right now, man. It looks like Frost is just losing a lot of momentum in this match. Yeah, a little bit of spacing is going to take you a long way as a sortie. And right now, Frost lacking a little bit in that department. But, I mean, you got to get hands to props to Micro. I mean, doing a great job closing in the gap, doing a great job kind of closing in on this Krom. And pretty much one solid stock lead, and we're going to see how it's going to develop. Yeah, that's why I really enjoy the way you want to <laughs> play, but you cannot recover in that sense, especially facing an F-Smash. And now, Micro down to his last dog, but... So far, the momentum has been shifted now. It's back to a little bit of an even state. Micro already getting a big advantage and with a gigantic up B with the uppercut. Already pushing Frost at 106. Yeah, I like these like moments of brilliance that Frost has from getting just like a random F smash stock to a lot of really good combos. Perfect parry right there. It's excellent mm -hmm. stuff, but need a little bit more in that tank, a little bit more juice to kind of fully fight Micro, especially at 129%. Oh, no. Especially at a game two situation because Micro uses that special punch, manages to just knock out Frost's stock, and that's game one. Going it's, to Micro. Unfortunate. it's unfortunate, too, especially with the trade of the up air from Micro, trading with the neutral aerial from uh, Frost, too. So that's honestly what occurred that allowed him to get the uppercut at the last stock. And, you know, we saw some patience coming in from Frost at that last point. He was playing a little bit slower and playing with a less aggression compared to his first two, but... So far, my micro, you know, definitely making sure this matchup looks good for on his end. Yeah. But hey, just a little bit more spacing, a little bit more elbow grease as well. Of course, you mm -hmm. can never forget about that in this game too. Interested to see where these counter picks are going to go, but at the same time, uh, I I'm excited to see if there's going to be any character changes too, because you never quite know with these online brackets what crazy characters are going to come out, especially because there's a new character. I'm mm -hmm. excited to see who what people are going to bring out. I, you know what? I'm waiting for someone to pull out that character. You know, it's a, uh, it's, it's a he who shall not be named because he's a big villain in a, in a many stories. But we'll have to see if they're going to be making a swap. It looks like they're going to no, keep the, the same run back. here. It's the run back. I appreciate it, man. I think Frost. I think Frost has to try and get a download. It's a favorable matchup for his end because of the sword and because of. It, because of him being able to space out some of these aerials, I think if Frost wants to adapt, though, he has to play a little bit slower and also be okay of just letting Micro do his thing in front of him and try and punish with those out-of-shield options. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a good start right now. Just tons of conversions, a lot of aerial love coming in from Frost Falchion. But at the same time, Micro, we'll see if they manage to bounce back. But I'm, I like I'm going to see this. A little bit more retreating aerials, mm -hmm. a little more mindfulness about where they are being spaced on this screen. And Frost doing pretty good, even though Micro is really quick to even up that percentage. Man, Micro is just so good when the moment he's in, already getting a jab lock into the F smash already. Shot put off the ledge too, gets the second one. He wants to see if he can find a third. Doesn't get it, but Frost is already seeing 117. Rain, this is not looking good for the Krom. 
Yeah, that is such a deficit to come back from. Just immediately oh. run out of the I mean, hey, now your whole stock gone. How is Micro finding these punches? It is amazing. Frost is Frost is just sitting on that inter platform. Does not know what to do. Looking a little bit lost. I mean, you can already tell he's a little bit shaken, especially when he's he's taking a little bit of breather, breather on the age of platform, man. And also, sometimes you're gonna need it, especially in these ledge trap situations. It's just so much more favorable. But the moment Micro gets in, he converts all that damage just so well. Already building up a, a good amount of percentage coming in. It's just going to be on Frost to try and get an edge guard, and he definitely does. It's definitely much needed knowing that uh, this game is basically almost at an even point. I love that kind of. Hey, I'll call your bluff, or what do we need to do off stage? Let's find <laughs> out. Just chase off back here. It is yeah. so beautiful. I love people that are willing to just go for things off stage because they have such a huge payout. I mean, Micro died at what, 90%? That was such a clean mm -hmm. kill. And he's Frost immediately kind of showing that they're doing great. These early percentages are where Frost is really shining. You can see that in the conversions and the quick combos. It's at those higher percentages and securing the stocks where it really matters, though. It is interesting that Frost is playing more of the ledge trapping game instead of the edge guard game, knowing that he actually could just uh, short hop drop off the ledge and then go for a counter that will stop the active hitbox from Micro's recovery. So Frost playing a little bit slower, playing a little bit more of this ledge trap game. I really actually want to see him go for more of these edge guards because it's worked well in that first stocking. It's definitely worked well, especially in this matchup that will work, that punishes the Mii Brawl's recovery. Yeah, and as we're getting starting to get to those percentages, we're going to start seeing characters at ledge if they're just not dead completely. Right now, they're just kind of duking it out in the center stage. And yeah, Micro's off stage. What are you going to do? Not quite still finding it, though. Okay. Does find it back here. RCD at 131, 133. But he's still sticking to this ledge trapping game, trying to see if he can read a jump with the back air and definitely spacing out. But Ooh. a good trade with that four tilt will claim the second stock. Yeah, really just kind of jumping in and out. It, Messing Micro's expectations there of soundly, just kind of hopping and hopping in, instant forward oh. tilt, really catches him off guard, and that performance match almost caught us off guard, but frankly, Frost a little bit more aware. Yeah, but now I think this is where Frost should be looking really good, knowing that Micro has to overextend to see if he can take the second stock and try and even it up here, but take a look at what, how Frost is playing. He's basically just moving around, spacing a lot of the options, but you cannot try and go in with a forward, air, forward neutral air to land on top of him. You have to be very mindful of the way you want to space and definitely appreciating the way Frost is playing this really slow now. Yeah, just careful movement. That's just kind of the name of the game of Frost, and as you said, beautiful stuff. I will say, I like Micro's just kind of focusing on kill options. It's just, hey, you're going to get hit by this eventually. And I like seeing the specials come into play. That kind of uh, Zero Suit Samus flip kick it gives Micro the mobility needed to try to flip Frost up. And oh, no, that was a whiffed F smash. We're not looking great, but Ooh. off stage again is where things might kind of shine for Frost. Yeah, this Ledge Trap is definitely costing Micro a good amount, though. Nice little roll. But you can definitely see Micro getting a little bit too antsy with his kill options. I think you see a little bit more patience at the end of it. But. <laughs> Gotta watch out for the Crom side, man. It's gonna take. It's gonna catch you off guard, and it's gonna catch Micro off guard in the second game. Yeah, it caught me off guard too. I was like, "What's he doing <laughs> off stage? Oh, that's mm -hmm. what Crom's doing off stage. Sucking, taking you down, and while he just gets to ledge, and that's a one-one set." Yeah, and I actually really appreciate the adaptation that actually came in rain from Frost overall in that match. You know, the moment he got that edge guard and that first stock, he he kind of looked like he had the ball at that point. Clean second clean second stock overall and then the third one because he was a stock up he just you know what let micro do his thing Micro's the one who has to overextend in this matchup and as long as he's trying just trying to throw hit throw hits out it's gonna whiff Krom can easily punish with that sword that he has yeah so solid stuff all around it looks like we are gonna get some sort of kind of stage change mm -hmm. so we're hopping in we'll see if that plays a difference i mean frost dominated the run back so you have to respect that but nothing wrong with changing the stage and filling out with your comfort Ooh. it's like yoshi's island Definitely different. Try plats, a little bit of slants, but still a lot of potential for both characters here. Because hey, Krom excels at this stage too. So chill and walk. Who you got? I'm actually not too sure. It's honestly with game one going into game two, and they're both trading here. We just have to see which one can actually get the early momentum coming in. It is a smaller stage, so Micro might be able to find a little more opportunities. But as you said, man, uh, the short ceiling in this stage can definitely prove uh, bad for both of them the way they want to play. And you already see them not wanting to stay on these platforms because they know the risk of the ceiling. Yeah, ceiling's absolutely detrimental. I mean, if you see in Micro's playstyle how they were getting that punch, that special punch, just in both games, not quite killing off the top of PS2, but with an extra platform up top, it is certainly possible that Micro can find it. That's what I'm talking about right there. That is what Micro is going for. So you need yeah. to keep an eye out if you're Frost. Yeah, the timing is pretty tight to get the down throw into the uppercut as a confirm. He managed to get the last air dodge. But oh. speaking of uppercut, man, he already takes out the first stock, and that's also sitting pretty, too, with 40% in his pocket.
Yeah, Frost stuck on that top platform. This is why you could see the gears turning in Micro's head as as they decided to go to Yoshi's story. Like, it just makes sense. And so far, so good for Micro. Yeah, the suplex, of course, does a good amount of damage, even though it doesn't have a lot of knockback. So this is a good way to get rid of any sort of stay moves that you have. But now we've been in the situation before, Rain, where Frost has to try and close the distance and see if he can put out some damage. But... If it's going to be like game one, it's not going to look too good. Uh -oh. That smash managed to push him all the way off stage, but Micro does make it back onto the ledge. Yeah, that was a very close call for Micro. Amazing parry by Frost, but got to hand it to him. That's the more of the stuff you need if you want to come out on top here. Good up smash in, but still Frost needs to claim the stock as fast as he can. A good parry into the nair, but he doesn't follow with the back here. Now he actually does it. So back into it, two stocks at two, but the uppercut's going to push him already, push Frost already hit to 101. Yeah, I, I think Frost is tr starting to find the movement here in Game 3. We're seeing kind of shuffling around, kind of mixing up their attack timing, and that's so important here, especially because Micro is just fishing for kill moves. It's just so tough, though, because Micro can just go up and call out any sort of jump that Frost wants to do, and it's been working out so far, especially in Game 1. Game 2 definitely called out some of it, too. Has to go for the edge guard, but Frost still not still not opting for it. Really, really uh, disappointed that he's not really trying to edge guard this knee baller. Yeah, right now, just kind of focus on getting away from those very scary up smash and up B moves. That's kind of just like the main thing is just, hey, can I please get away from these specific moves? Got to be careful that shot, but too. Love the air dodge. Love the awareness. Now back to the ledge, ledge trap situation. Doesn't get the neutral air into the backwards aerial, unfortunately, at the, stay at the edge. So it's going to put him back to neutral, which is a little bit worrisome. But Frost getting hit with the shot put on the recovery. A little close, though. Oh, nice. That amazing dash back. You see that instant movement. you got to love Krom's quick movement speed, and you got to love Frost's awareness. My goodness, just kind of knowing and getting hit in the head with this, like, a random up B. But hey, if you're micro, we'll take those, because this is a last stock game three situation, neck and neck. It's actually crazy, though, that micro's down to call out a lot of these jumps of what Frost is throwing out. And that's why it's so cool to see him actually, you know, we'd say it's random, but he's actually making some pretty well well-rounded reads knowing that Frost just wants to play in the air and wants to jump up in his face. So definitely a lot of good call-outs. I mean, it's working out so far. I like Micro because we now understood just going to hold shield with Kram up. He's near ledge. Oh. But that is off the top. Oh. And no, Frost is actually living 98% though. Very scary. Still very scary at the end of the day for Frost because he has to see if he can close the distance. 98 and 108 right now. Back into a back into disadvantage right now. Good up air strings into the back air. Doesn't unfortunately call out the flip jump on him. Yeah, a lot of kill moves are on the potential from the Me Brawler, but at the same time, Krom is an explosive character. It's neck and neck though, Rain. Any yeah, 30% 30, 30 difference. Oh, yep. up smash though, just barely. Frost kissed that blast zone, but came back for more. 140%, I'm not sure oh. if they can serve one more hit. And yeah, it's the shot put from Micro that manages to take down Frost in that neck and neck game three situation. That shot put catch a lot of people off guard, Ray, not gonna lie. We don't really see the shot put be used when it comes to the Me Brawler kit. Well, we do see a good amount, but I know a lot of other Me Brawlers like to change up the kit overall, but that's where, I, that's where we take a look at the Mies itself. It adds a lot of fluidity in the way they want to play because at the end of it, you can always just swap out to another Me Brawler, but you could also change out the kit overall. I'm definitely liking it so far.